who's to blame for the loss? Pat Shermer. That was terrible from Pat Shermer. That quick? Not the two-point play. That quick? Not, yeah, Pat Shermer. <laughs> that, not the two-point play. I mean, look, Eli was bad, too. I don't care about the numbers. He was like, Eli was bad, as usual. He's not a good quarterback anymore. But he's not even a starting caliber quarterback anymore. But Pat Shermer blew the game, and it wasn't a two-point play. I don't know why people are even talking about that. That makes sense. You, if you believe in going for the win instead of playing for the tie, which brave people do, which people who aren't scared of their own shadow and scared of losing do, you go for the win, then if you're going to go for the win, you're, you're down two scores, two touchdowns, you're going to have to go for the extra point anyway. Why not do it now? And by the way, it worked. Odell should have caught the ball. Odell, I'm sure, acknowledge he should have caught the ball. So it worked. I love that. I'm not, I got no problem with going for two. And by the way, when you actually do the math, you're not 100% even to kick the point after, right? The extra point. So right then, and, and then what are you to win in overtime? 50-50? So you're something under than 50% to win, even if you, go, if you just try to kick the extra point. But if you go for it to get two yards on a play, you can't do that to try to win the game? What, are, what is everybody in football cowards? No, Pat Shermer was right there. Here's the problem with Pat Shermer. Saquon Barkley, for, I'll give you the, the most egregious example. Saquon Barkley, you're third and two late in the game. You need to score. You certainly need to pick up the first down. They, they show you what they're going to do and toss them the ball almost the first down's worth behind the line of scrimmage with no one blocking for him. It was that kind of play calling all game from Pat Shermer that was the problem. It was not going for it on on uh, going for it for the extra for, for the two point conversion. That was not the problem. It was consistently play calling. It was awful. So Eli was bad as usual. Pat Shermer's play calling cost him the game. Let me tell you something right now. <clears throat> Every time I look at Pat Shermer, particularly with his post game conferences, I see an offensive coordinator. I don't see a head coach. I don't see a leader of men. I see somebody that's ultra sensitive. He's in the New York market. He didn't have a winning record as a head coach when he came up here. I don't know what kind of boy genius they want to attach to him. I never saw it. And watching the Giants this year, clearly there's a lot of question marks there. I will tell you the most alarming thing, and it's from a generic perspective as it pertains to what Max has said, but to me, you don't give Saquon Barkley the, the, the 14 carries. You got to give him the ball more than that. He's Saquon Barkley. That's number one. Number two, Atlanta. 30th ranked defense, 30th rank in yards, uh, in, in, in yards allowed, 30th rank against the pass, 19th against the rush. There are a myriad of ways to exploit this Atlanta team. They're fast, but they're small. And what they try to do is they try to get you with speed and what have you, but you can ground and pound them. Now, I think that obviously you're worried about their offense. And, you know, I can understand why there's some trepidation along those lines, but you got to attack their weakness. And I don't think the Giants did enough of that, Ryan. So, quarterbacks. Quarterback, you say he's done. You yep. say he's done. Cooked. Quarterback can't play anymore. Nope. Offensive line, they're terrible. Yep. Right? Play caller, can't call plays. The head coach is not a leader of men. Well, who makes all, who makes all these decisions? Mm -hmm. Good point. Right? So if we say there's a multitude of blame to go around. It's a good point. We got to talk about the, the Giants exec. We got to go Dave Gettleman. Right? You got to go to John Mara. You got to say, okay, these guys evaluated this team and felt like this was the best way to go. They felt Pat Shermer was the leader of men to get these guys to go in the right direction. They felt that Eli Manning had enough left in his tank that you draft Saquon Barkley and not a quarterback. You felt that giving Nate Solder $15 million to shore up the left tackle oh, he's would, been terrible. would get it done. You thought adding Will Hernandez, moving Eric Flowers to the right tackle was all that you needed to do and so though Pat Shermer has the blame has blame in this though the players have blame in this it's the decision makers that have put the New York Giants in this position that has this team in the position where you know they're I like that one point. and six you know I like that point if you look at any team where you're thinking let's evaluate their chances year in year out you're looking at the coach and the quarterback that's the whole thing you know like you know why the Chiefs are so good why know why Mahomes looks so good other than yeah. the talent because Andy Reid has it schemed so that he's never throwing into a tight window. He's throwing the guys wide open. Tom Brady doesn't have to thread the needle. Guys are wide open. That's coaching, and you need a talented quarterback. The Giants right now have the anti-coach and the anti-quarterback. They have a coach who, who clearly looks out of his depth and a quarterback who can't make this, who's immobile, who's old, who looks shell-shocked like he doesn't want to take shots and can't make this, doesn't have the arm strength he used to and can't make the simplest accurate pass, either down the field or even a close five, eight-yard pass. Yep. That's the anti-coach and the anti-quarterback. And, and that's all about evaluation.
the valuation was done wrong. We, we, in we, New York. we understand why, because too many people in professional sports, especially the NFL, hire dudes they're comfortable with as opposed to dudes who can actually get the job done. Absolutely. Pat right. Shermer came into the job with a 10 and 23 record as a head coach. He is now 11 and 29. I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. all his fault, but my God, you couldn't find something better yep. than well, Sally. Uh, the Smiley, you know Giants he's allowed. get the Redskins next week, and the Falcons have a bye. Second straight loss. He's allowed to put ice. an extra tight end in the game, by the way. You're allowed to do that. 380 yards. You need blocking help.